first demo is actually walkthrough. What are the modern portal experiences and enhancements which we have been releasing within the past two weeks? And uh, for some of you, this might be a recap on the on the blog post and, and what we've been releasing in the tech community, SharePoint blog. But let's actually have a look on those in practice. So you'll see how they actually work in practice and how you can modify them. And we can have a discussion in our window around those capabilities. And then the second demo, uh, which I get to after this one, is around uh, the upcoming uh, uh, self-service provisioning service. Um, and I'll explain what it is and the timings of when we get to that model. But anyway, let's talk about the modern portal experiences. So I wanted to have two slides first here, uh, which just to explain uh, what, are, what were the announcements. Now, uh, so first of all, there was an announcement uh, on 31st of January around the mecha menus, site errors, and footers, which are now rolling out. Uh, they are going to the. They should be available now if you in first release tenants. Uh, for example, in my first release tenants, which I'm going to use as a demo environment, they are available already. Um, and they will be then rolling out uh, worldwide uh, later in March. And this means that you can actually use the mega menu option. Uh, you basically have an option of using the, in quotes, the classic menu or the classic style of a menu, or then you can select the mega menu way of uh, rendering. Um, or, uh, oh, sorry, and then there is a option of uh, defining the header, and I'll get back on that. Uh, you'll see that one in practice uh, pretty soon. So you can actually adjust the header size uh, to be a standard or a compact. Uh, we might actually introduce additional header sizes in future, so you are able to then adjust uh, the rendering logic of the site. Uh, and then uh, there's a uh, the footer functionality, in which is around the fact that you are able to uh, define a standard footers inside of the content. Uh, so basically, these are right now only for modern pages, but uh, you're able to add static links there. You're able to add images there. Uh, you're able to add uh, text uh, in the footer uh, section as well. Now, let me actually show uh, this one uh, in practice. Well, actually, let's go through the, the second demo as well and, and second slide as well. This is how well I prepared for my demo. And the second thing what I want to actually show in practice on the demos, uh, demos uh, is the one which we announced yesterday, which is around the modern page enhancements. And this is also available right now already in first uh, in target release tenants, basically first release tenants. Uh, and it's actually planned to be rolled out by end of February worldwide, so relatively fast uh, rolling out. And what that one actually has, and what are the new capabilities, is the custom title region. So you have a different option of defining how the page uh, header section is getting rendered. Uh, you can use the one, the standard one, which was there already, or then you can use the, the color blocks and all of that. And we'll see that one in practice in a second. You, you can also use the section backgrounds, which actually was missed on another one as well. And you can do custom thumbnails and custom description for the pages uh, in the pages metadata. So kind of a classic scenarios, which are then unblocking people more and more to move from the classic publishing to the modern publishing, now that the modern publishing is more and more enabling uh, and the needed capabilities. Now, let me actually demo both of these uh, in practice. Uh, so let me jump to my demo tenant. And this is just a random E3 tenant. And I'll come back on how these sites were created uh, slightly later. Now, these are basically uh, example sites uh, based on the lookbook, uh, if you are familiar with the SharePoint lookbook, uh, which is a super useful resource. So let me actually show that one. Uh, in practice, so if I search for SharePoint Lookbook, uh, you can actually find a site owned by our SharePoint design team. Uh, we have a quite massive SharePoint design team nowadays, which is responsible of defining the look and feel and the graphics and the experiences within the modern SharePoint. Um, and they basically then created a, a SharePoint Lookbook for Ignite 2018. Uh, which is then a great resource of getting innovation around the different kind of sites you can actually build uh, using uh, modern SharePoint. Now, these sites, like I said, uh, in here uh, are basically using the lookbook look and feel, and these are coming from the lookbook. So we can use, for example, the marketing landing uh, site as an example, and when we start testing the, the branding capabilities. Now, in here, as an example, uh, so let me actually go to the site settings and let me go uh, change the look option. And this is the new change to look functionality, which you can see here. So basically, uh, we have a different way of managing uh, the, or we, we are grouping the, all of the branding capabilities in this group. 
And then from here, we can select, for example, the theme. In my case, my tenant is full of themes. Um, and there's an example themes, uh, an example mockup themes uh, for Contos or whatever companies. Uh, we can actually define the header section. Uh, we can define the header section and we're able to set those settings in the header and come back on the on those settings in a second. Uh, we can define the navigation, uh, which in our case right now is the, the mega menu style navigation. Uh, or, but we can also fall back on the classic, uh, so you can actually absolutely control uh, or do the similar uh, rendering as the classic style as we used to uh, without the mega menu. Oh, and please remember to mute yourself when you're joining on the call. Now, how do you get the mega menu? You need to be in a targeted release uh, option right now. Uh, this is going uh, worldwide uh, relatively soon. So now, if you only have uh, one level of navigations, then you don't actually see the mega menu rendering style. So that means that uh, if I if I click apply and let me actually close this one. Uh, so you need to make sure that you have a three level uh, three level navigation section. Uh, in your navigation, and after that, your menus are getting rendered as a mega menu. So uh, it's basically just a matter of having enough links to be able to render then uh, your menu as a mega menu. So it is static links uh, by default in the mega menu. Now, the second thing uh, in here. Um, is really around the site site header. So let's actually modify slightly this site. Uh, we want to actually change the, the look and feel and we're going to slightly modify the site. We can modify obviously the logo uh, here. Uh, so we can actually modify that easily from the header section. We can also choose if the header is standard or if it's compact. And compact basically means that it's rendering in a smaller uh, area. And obviously based on your feedback in the future, we might have additional options uh, in the header uh, rendering. Still the mega menu and everything else remains the same. But if you have a look on the standard, it's much wider, um, and the, the, the search is in a different location. If I do apply, you can actually see that the search with the compact menu, let me actually close that, is on the same level as the, the following and search side. So we're basically squeezing uh, slightly the size uh, right now. Now, let me go back on to change the look uh, and the header options. Uh, we can also define uh, the background, uh, so uh, which is coming actually from the theme. So depending on the theme of the site, we're able to then uh, use the background and define the background for the site, which makes a lot of sense. Now, now in my case, I'm actually going to do the Contoso electronic marketing because I want to change uh, the header to use a, a orange background. So we get nice look and feel like we have uh, in the in the SharePoint lookbook. So, um, and that's the header section. Now, the navigation was basically the mega menu and cascading. We might have future options here and future settings uh, here as well at some point. And then we have the footer section in here. So let me actually save whatever I was doing here and let me scroll down. So you can see that there's uh, there's the standard feedback and get mobile app, which by the way, the feedback menu and button, you can actually nowadays set that to be disabled in a tenant level and it's not being rendered in the modern pages. Now, if I scroll down, we can actually see that there's a footer. And you can actually see that even the mega menu, uh, sorry, the feedback menu is getting hidden. So that is getting now fixed uh, from a rendering perspective. Now, how do we actually then modify this footer and what is the footer? Well, first of all, it's really important to understand that now that the footer uh, capability is getting rolled out, it is enabled by default for communication sites. And this might be slightly confusing. Uh, the feature crew made a decision around this one. Uh, so by default for every single communication site, it will be enabled. And I think that's that's included in the announcement, uh, but uh, just to make sure that you are aware how to control that, we also have a documentation in the SharePoint dev docs around the SharePoint site footer. And in here, we are also uh, making sure that you're able to, uh, well, we, we show you the PMP PowerShell commands, how to control is the footer enabled or not. So by default, the footer will be enabled for every single communication site when it's getting rolled out. But you can write a PowerShell script looping your sites um, and then uh, set the footer enabled false. And that will basically then make sure that it's, it's not getting uh, enabled. Now, let me get back on the Contoso uh, market, marketing uh, page and let's actually modify the uh, slightly the footer. So let's go to the footer section. Uh, we can control the visibility. That's basically the same as we can do uh, with, the, uh, with the PowerShell. Uh, let me actually apply that so we get the footer available. 
do I need to move? Okay, there's the footer. There we go. And then uh, I can actually upload a logo. Uh, in my case, I'm going to just upload, for example, the Contoso logo there. Uh, that's a pretty nice looking Contoso logo defined from this one. Uh, we're able to define uh, footer name visibility. So we can say something like Contoso Rocks. Um, and we can actually see that being a static text uh, then on the menu. And then uh, on the footer navigation link, we're able to start adding navigation links in here as well. So if you do something like SPPMP, SharePoint PMP, adding that one there, uh, we can add another one uh, as a static link, aka MS, SPPMP, let's just call support. And let's add one more. Uh, oh, let's add one more so we can actually see that there's at least three of them. SPP and P um, tools, what are the typical links, uh, what people are having in footer. And then uh, let's apply that. Uh, well, oops, let's save, apply, there we go, and close. So we can actually see that we have a SharePoint PMP link, we have a support link, and we have two links uh, in the menu. And now that we start with the, uh, well, the basic setup of the of the footer is relatively simple, as you can see. They, they are static links. Uh, there's no mecha menu capabilities uh, right now in here, but obviously those are being thought of already. So we might have a more expanding uh, or bigger menus of footers uh, in the future here as well. Now, if you would need to have, for example, a custom footer which shows links based on user profile attributes or on which uh, or the, the links might be dependent on the organization where users belongs to, then you would fall back on uh, the SharePoint framework and then you would implement your stuff using uh, the SharePoint framework uh, settings. Um, the setting, uh, the footer settings uh, are basically on the site uh, site level. So these are not getting leaked. They're not basically, how would I put it? They're not tenant level settings and they are only on the site level from this perspective, at least when we start with. So that's, that's a uh, important. Now, um, what else did we want to actually show? So uh, let's have a look on the timing. There are a few questions in the chat area is about sure. the sure. mega menu and the footer. Maybe we can Absolutely. share them and try to give an answer. Uh, the very first one I saw is uh, where are the links stored for mega menu and footers? Uh, different location uh, compared with the navigation or same uh, uh, location but uh, with a different approach? So how they do are, they? They are actually stored in a navigation collection. Uh, so they are actually SP web navigation objects. Now, right now, there is no direct access to that navigation uh, entry uh, in the CSAM API. But you can use REST API, and to, in today's uh, SharePoint Dev Weekly, there was an article from Anup Tati from Content and Code, where he actually shows how to manipulate uh, these things using a REST API. So I would d definitely double check that article from Anup. So really good stuff. It's, it's good. So about the upcoming question, which was, uh, are those links configurable with the, the PMP provisioning engine? Uh, let me say that we can Not work yet. on it. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet, they but will we be. can work on Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah. So, <laughs> so um, and on that one, so basically, obviously, uh, Paolo is one of the key uh, players in the, well, Paolo is our schema designer, let's put it this way. Well, not only just a schema designer for the provisioning engine, but um, we've been now concentrating on the self-service provisioning uh, engine uh, portal. But right after we get that one out for a preview, then we will start working on a new version of the engine as well and the provisioning schema. And and at part of that schema, we will then support uh, the footers and headers and a few other things which are in the pipeline. Right, Paula? Yeah. And I'm really looking forward to start working on the next release of the schema. <laughs> yes. A yes. Few, few more very quick questions. What about security trimming audiences and culture in the mega menu and in the footer links? Is there anything? Uh, no, right now, right now, well, uh, right now, as a, from a functionality perspective, uh, these are just static links. So there is no uh, accent, there's no permission validation uh, in these links. So uh, is there something coming? Well, that's always depending on the demand. That's always dependent on how many customers are asking uh, uh, those things and is it reasonable to implement that. Now, you can implement some of these kind of capabilities using SharePoint framework, using the header and footer place placeholders and we are looking into having more placeholders in the future. So potentially you might actually have a placeholder for navigation in the future, not 
that you are overriding the whole navigation, but you have a placeholder to go inside of the navigation to add personalized links, uh, which would be then more um, easier way for you to get access on the navigation elements rather than overriding the whole navigation section, which hopefully makes sense. Um, that's, that is absolutely in our pipeline. Uh, and uh, one of the key things for the modern portals is that we need to enable more, more placeholders and customer extensibility points. Not customization, not customization, <laughs> not customization point, extensibility points, just to make sure that I'm using the right terminology. So <laughs> anyway. Cool. I don't see any other uh, urgent question in the chat area, so maybe we can move on. Around it, this topic, yes, indeed. Yeah. Now, okay, so um, pretty cool looking site, and we wanted to also have a look on the modern pages enhancements, so custom title regions and section backgrounds and all of that. So let's actually create a new page here in this site. So if I add a page, uh, it is obviously adding a, a modern page on the site. Um, and then I can modify this. Let me actually uh, upload an image. Uh, for example, let's go one step up and some cool image. Uh, is it actually, was that a big enough? Let me do that. Uh, and then we can obviously modify the image on the right level. And then we can start modifying how the Bates header section actually is getting rendered. So obviously you don't have to use an image and you can get rid of the whole image and then we'll only have a Bates title and that's it. And we could have a custom page uh, really, imp uh, on, really important uh, this article, even though in this case this is actually a page. Uh, and so you don't have to have a, a background there. Uh, you can have a background there uh, using the image and a title. This is kind of the classic static uh, rendering option which we had for the modern pages already. The new options are then using a color block. Uh, so uh, you basically have this color block uh, option and I can do something like uh, text above the title, PMP demo page, uh, so we can actually make it more descriptive, we can add additional texts uh, here as well. I can also send their chat if that makes more sense uh, from your branding perspective, uh, or I can put it on the left as well. No right hand alignment. Uh, well, that's a decision by, uh, done by somebody. Show publishing date, we could actually do that as well uh, if we want to have an alternative text for the image as well. Now, we, we can also do overlap, which basically means that we're overlapping then on that uh, image, which is on the page as well. So now you have multiple options uh, then available on the page. Now, let me actually use the color block, uh, and uh, that's a huge section, obviously, on the page, but in my case, that's uh, completely fine. Uh, let me also uh, do here, is, uh, let's add actually some text, and let me actually copy some lorem ipsum uh, from uh, from the text, and uh, one second, and here we go get some content in here. Uh, we could have uh, some content, super important article. Uh, we could absolutely have multiple uh, layouts and sections. We can do images on one side. We can do sections on the other side. Let's actually upload a one image. Uh, that's a super important looking image. Let's add that one on the page. Uh, let's add additional text on the page on the left side. So that's aligning nicely then there. Uh, and then uh, let's close up the page uh, with a full page text section from there. And then the, the new thing uh, which is now getting rolled out is also that you're able to control the background colors of the section. And what it means is that you're able to then use uh, uh, um, the theme color based colors which are basically coming from the theme of the site and use that uh, in the sections of the page as well. Maybe the, the full orange is quite uh, hectic so let me do a slight uh, color there. I'm, I'm not sure is it how visible that is for the other side of the screen uh, and let's do publish. Uh, obviously, uh, you've probably seen this already, so we can actually promote this. We can post the news uh, as a news on a page. Uh, I can click promote option and I can do an email and then I'm basically sending this as an email to somebody. It's a nice looking email then in an inbox, which is then saying, uh, check this out, uh, check this out. Uh, we in, inside of the SharePoint Engineering, we are using this actually quite, quite a much. So uh, all of our 
communications nowadays, the, the in quotes official communications metrics and progress and everything else is being reported as say news articles and then we're promoting those using the, the email based uh, promotions as an example. And obviously it's getting promoted on the on the portals as well. But that's it, let me close that one. Uh, it is a nice, pretty nice looking page. Uh, we have commenting functionalities, all of that, and people are able to like and, and add comments on the page as well. So pretty nice looking getting uh, uh, experience, uh, which is fluent, it's fast, uh, no pushbacks, and, and it's performant as well. Mm -hmm.